Everything is still a matter of luck and the whims of the weather. Heavy rain plus high mountains can mean trouble anywhere in the world. The Alps, steep sides of heavily populated valleys, natural bowls. This is the Swiss town of Brig, at the bottom of one of the Alpine bowls. It's a picture postcard place with magnificent scenery. But in 1993, an enormous rain cloud sailing in low got trapped against that scenery and dumped its full load of water, and the bowl began to fill up. A flash flood is the result of a lot of rain over a large area being funneled into a small area. And what makes a flash flood so destructive is its suddenness. One moment, Brig was normal, if rainy, and the next moment, a giant river was crashing through it at a rate of 10 feet a second. That much water moving that fast is, above all, very, very strong. Not much can resist it. Every car parked on or near the main street was wrecked. Every house and business at ground floor level was gutted. Stephen Shanton's restaurant was full of people at the time. Within a few minutes, it rose about two feet. There were over a hundred people with us in the restaurant. We had to evacuate everyone straight into the hotel upstairs. Rescue helicopters had to pluck people off rooftops and out of trees. They did a good job. In the end, only two people were killed. Not only were 800 cars destroyed, but with the water came some 10,000 tons of mud and rocks. That had to be cleaned up. The water poured off the mountainsides for 12 hours. Cleaning up the damage took months and cost half a billion dollars. The calamity that hit this little Swiss mountain town began hundreds of miles away over the Mediterranean Sea. Usually, the moisture heavy clouds coming off the sea just push against the Alps and stay there. Sometimes there is enough wind to send them up and over the mountaintops. This might result in nothing worse than some light showers. At other times, there are violent downpours. The question is, how can you know what any particular cloud is going to do to your valley? To figure this out, Scientists went up among the clouds for a closer look. It was a $20 million international project to establish once and for all the way to tell a cloud's temperament. With scientists and equipment from all over the world, the intention was to fly right into some of the most violent rainstorms. The movement of the air towards the Alps is important to understand the dynamics of the storm. Unless you know how much water goes into a cloud, you never know how much will fall out of it at the bottom. So you need this information. We've just passed uh, point nine, so drop A is coming up in about uh, a minute. That's good. I, I have all the this was uncomfortable flying, both among the mountains and in the storms. The plane was packed with sensors that could analyze everything going on around it. Once in the clouds, the scientists set out to study the air right down into the valley floors.
they dropped weather-sensitive capsules called radiosondes, which analyzed the air all the way down and sent measurements back to the plane. As the radiosondes fell, onboard equipment recorded air temperature, humidity, and wind speed every few seconds for later analysis. It looks good. The pilots flew over hundreds of miles of valleys, and for the first time, right into intense mountain storm systems. While some of the scientists were looking at the storms from the inside, others were getting an extra dimension from radar on the ground. A mobile Doppler radar was shipped to the Italian Alps from Oklahoma to follow the movements of the storm's water droplets. The project's two headquarters were in Innsbruck and Milan. Scientists at each site correlated all the measurements seeking answers. Screens showed different air pressures and temperatures, and most importantly, the humidity within the storm. They discovered that the worst storms are the slow ones. One of the most important findings is that it's not the big, big storm that's causing all these problems. It can be just ordinary, heavy rain going on for hours and hours on end. Big storms have a tendency to move through an area. They look dramatic, but they have not so much of an effect if they move. Now, the Alps have the effect of locking these storms into place. So even a quite ordinary storm can produce absolutely enormous amounts of rainfall over a small area. And if all that rain comes down into one river, this river is going to go overboard. Ever since there have been people in the Alps, they've been surviving flash floods, mainly by not living in places that flood too often. But flood-free places are running out. Based on this research, it will at last be possible to more accurately predict flash floods. And not only in the Alps, the principle can apply to all mountains, from the Rockies to the Himalayas. There's no worry with flash floods here. It's Antarctica, with temperatures as low as 80 below in the winter and swept by blizzards. A blizzard is snow blown in a wind at more than 35 miles an hour. Here, the weather is so consistently extreme that it's almost uninhabitable, at least for humans. To live here, you pretty much have to have evolved here. Penguins manage it by laying on thick layers of fat and huddling together for protection. Gradually, the colony will change places, so every penguin has its fair share of time in the cold on the outside of the group. But these aren't normal blizzards. Antarctica is almost like a desert. It's very dry. You hardly get any snow at all falling during the year. At its center, there is less rainfall than in the Sahara Desert. But in Antarctica, what you do get is very cold winds blowing down a hillside, and they can reach really quite extreme strengths. And those very strong winds will whip up the snow that's on the surface and cause blizzard conditions. Winds here can get up to an incredible 120 miles an hour. But that doesn't mean that habitable places don't get blizzards. Throughout history, they have consistently stunned Americans. This was one of the worst winters ever. The blizzard of 1934 brought paralysis to the eastern United States. This was the year when record snows blanketed Washington, D.C., a mantle of white that paralyzed the nation's capital. The breath of winter that disrupted affairs along the Potomac was only a harbinger of what the northern states were to feel in the winter of 1934. Niagara Falls was brought almost to a standstill. Its mighty roar hushed to a murmur. The temperature hovered at 28 below, and the mighty cataract was a mountain of ice. 